Um, excuse me, lady. Poor ladies. I'm trying to film a video here, okay? Give me a few minutes. And I'll give you some treats. Go ahead. Take a dust bath. Oh, you too? All right. Hey there, how's it going everyone? Welcome back, Plant Abundance here. What do you say we talk a bit about seed saving today? Something I'm very passionate about and I think is a very important aspect of gardening overall. In particular, what I wanted to focus on was how you can turn a hybrid into an open pollinated variety by collecting seeds. And um, before I get into that, let's kind of discuss the difference between hybrids and open pollinated seeds. So if you head to the store and you buy yourself a pack of tomato seeds and you notice it says hybrid on there, that seed has been grown in a controlled environment and the company that produced it more than likely manually went in there and cross-pollinated the plants in such a way that they created a unique variety that either puts out a better taste, flavor, is more resilient to disease, has more beauty to it. So that's the different things in general that people will hybridize plants to do. But in the end, if you try to collect seeds from that plant and regrow it, you're not going to get a plant true to type. Instead, you're going to end up with something different, something that, you know, came from somewhere within the genetic code, the DNA of the plant. But the plant's not going to grow exactly the same as the way it did the first year. So I don't have a problem with hybrids. I think that they definitely have a place in the garden. So this isn't like an anti-hybrid video by any means. But open pollinated seeds, which could also be referred to as a type of hybridization, are a seed that will grow true to type and they can still cross pollinate meaning if you grew let's say three plants in the same family let's just use brassica oleracea as an example so let's say you had collards kale and cabbage all growing in your garden uh, those plants could cross pollinate and if you save seed from any of those plants uh, you might not grow something exactly true to type whereas if you just grew one type of brassica oleracea let's say all you grew was one type of kale then you're guaranteed that those seeds that you harvest from that open pollinated variety or an heirloom variety, uh, they're a little different. Heirloom is something that's passed down generation after generation. 50 plus years, some people say, is what makes a seed an heirloom. But if you collect those seeds from the open pollinated plant that has not had the ability to cross pollinate with other plants within its family, then you're going to have an exact replica of the original plant you started with. Now, this is extremely important overall to our sovereignty, to just keeping us de independent, um, not dependent on commercial operations that breed seeds for hybrids. Because, you know, when you grow these open pollinated and heirloom varieties, you can collect hundreds, thousands of seeds from a single plant. And think about that. I mean, that's freedom. And that is giving you the ability to care for yourself. Whereas if you do buy any hybrid varieties, then you're going to be dependent upon a system to repurchase those seeds year after year to get that same plant. Now, I don't mean to be too long-winded with the explanation, but what I wanted to talk about mainly, like I mentioned in the beginning, was how you can take a hybrid seed and create an open pollinated variety that you can grow true to type. And the reason I wanted to discuss this primarily is because I've been offering up a lot of the different uh, perennial green seeds that are growing back here so the tree kales and the tree collards now the next stage would be can you create an open pollinated variety from these seeds i hope that some of you guys make that a goal and you do that and the way that you're going to be able to do that is to just grow one type whichever one it is that you purchase many of you bought many types and uh, so you're probably going to be in the same boat as me where you're growing all different varieties you're going to get different new and exciting varieties all the time when you save seeds but let's say you only purchased the dino tree kale or you're only planning on growing that this year if you take those seeds and you plant them out and with no other brass coloraceas around and you let you allow it to go to full maturity you collect the seeds from it and then you replant it after doing this several times so over the course of five to six years you're going to now have an open pollinated variety of seed um, something that's become stable and so each and every year what you want to do is you want to collect seeds from the strongest looking plant out of the bunch or strongest two looking plants whatever it is 
And then from those seeds, you want to pick the strongest seeds, the, the most healthy looking seeds from those plants and replant them. And do this over and over again, like I said, over the course of a few years, at which point the plant's going to stabilize and you're going to end up with something superior in quality that you could pass down family to family and end up with uh, an heirloom in time. Now another good thing about open pollinated seeds is that they can adapt to different regions, climate zones, soil types. So when you do stabilize the seed this way, it's giving you the ability to share them with others so that they can pass all of this down. And again, because it is open pollinated, it will be able to cross in the future so you can play with that as well. Once you've got a stable open pollinated seed, that's going to give you the ability to really hone in to qualities from that particular plant and cross it with other types of plants within the same family if you want to try something unique and try to create something new. So once again, just a reminder, this video is not against hybrids. Hybrids happen naturally in nature and they happen commercially and they both have their benefits. But uh, for self-sufficiency, for freedom, to preserve the diversity, making the effort to actually preserve and grow open pollinated and heirloom seeds is good for you, it's good for the planet, and it's good for long-term stability of our different crops that we grow. So over here I've got some Armenian cucumbers growing. I've featured these on many of my videos. I got a few vines growing atop this hugel culture. You can see where it's stretched out over on this side, starting to grow up this trellis. But these Armenian cucumbers are actually a musk melon. Their traits are very similar to that of a cucumber. They taste just like a cucumber. But this is a wonderful example of an open pollinated heirloom that I've been able to save seeds and grow true to type. And these Armenian cucumbers will not cross with other cucumbers. They won't cross with watermelons, just other plants in the muskmelon family. So cantaloupes, honeydews. So there's nothing that can stop me from collecting these seeds and growing it once again, true to type. And the Armenian cucumber is one of my favorite plants to grow, so that's important. But this information is good to know regardless of what kind of seeds that you're collecting if you're interested in growing the same exact plant that you collected the seed from. So just be aware, plants in the same family can cross pollinate with open pollinated seeds and proceed with caution if you're looking to save seed. Now it's time for a quick fig break here. Got the Peter's honey fig on point right now. Nice ripe figs. This is a green skin variety. My theory is that this helps to keep the birds away. As you can see, I've got lots of figs with no bites out of them. Because they don't have that deep purple or black skin that is the telltale sign for the wildlife to come in and nibble at it. Let's give this a try for you. Mmm. Absolutely delicious. Well, I hope this video was helpful or entertaining in some way. If so, I sure would appreciate a like. And if you haven't already, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to the channel. New uploads every week, and I'm always updating you guys on everything I got growing on around here. So with that, I wish you all a great rest of your day, and I'll be talking to you again soon. Take care. Well, hello there, pretty girl. Oh, you want to play? All right, well, let me give the ladies over here their treat. They've been waiting so patiently. Ladies, ready for your treat? Come on. It's on the ground. It's on the ground. And give. Good girl. Ready? Go. Where's your brother? You're looking for him, aren't you? Where'd he go? Let's go find him.
There he is. You ready, Rock? Come here, Happy. Are you ready? Had a boy.